Okay, so I thought I'd make a little video uh, to show you all uh, some things on Excel, how to make a graph, how to do some formulas, that sort of thing. So I set up all this fake data for my masses and volumes uh, here. I supposedly took uh, three trials of each sample here, so you can see uh, these are three trials on the same sample, um, and then again three trials of the volume on the same sample. Um, some of you might not have done this, uh, so this uh, the way that I do uncertainty on here might not apply to you. But uh, first of all, I'm going to go ahead and calculate my averages. So I'm going to insert a uh, column here, and I'm going to put this. This is going to be the average mass. And so to make a formula here, I just type uh, the equal sign and then average. Use, open the parentheses and I'm just going to sweep these cells in here that I want to average hit enter and there you go um, now I'm gonna if I grab the lower right corner of this cell it will copy that formula down and if you check these you'll see that they're averaging the appropriate um, or you can check and make sure they're averaging the appropriate cells here a7 colon means through so a7 through c7 one of the things I want to do here, if you're going to use this table in your report and you do need a table of all your data in your lab report, one of the things I'm going to do is, is adjust the number of decimal places. If I select all these, do a right click here, format the cells, uh, click number, and I can make sure that I've got three decimal places in all of them. Okay, um, And that's, that's what I want, so I'm going to click OK. So I've got two decimal places in all my cells now which is appropriate for that and here I've got one for my volume which is appropriate for that now my average I'll just leave that for now because I don't know uh, how many decimal places I'm going to want at this point I'm going to do the same thing over here for the average volume again average open the parentheses select the cells I want to average okay and then drag this down there we go. Okay, so I've got my averages. Now, how about my uncertainty? Because I'm going to need that as well. Uh, so let's say uncertainty in mass. And I already adjusted these, the widths of these columns. Uncertainty in volume. Now, Excel can't do max deviation that I know of, but it does do average deviation, which is AVEDEV. -E -E so I'll type that, AVEDEV. -E Open the parentheses again. Now, this is my uncertainty in mass, so I'm going to select my three points here. Enter. And just like I did before, pull these down. All right. Now I'm going to do the same thing for volume AVEDEV. -E Open the parentheses and pick those data. And again, drag this down. Okay. Now let's see. These uncertainties are all um, the uncertainties in the hundredth place. So I'm going to go ahead and format those cells so that it only shows the the two decimal places. Okay. And this one, the uncertainties in the uh, tens place. I've got a couple issues there I've got to look at, but anyway, let's for now, let's first put these in the put the decimals in the tens place. Now, what, what's going on here with this 5.93? It looks like I messed this up. Let's put something more reasonable in there. Maybe my volume was 8.5. I made these values up anyway, so uh, maybe this one was uh, 30.0. How about that? Okay, that's more reasonable. Uh, but I want, actually, I should have only one decimal place on this. Let's do that. All right. And that means over here, I'm okay with one decimal place on these averages. On these averages, though, I want to have uh, two decimal places, right? Make that agree with the uncertainty. Okay. There we go. All right, now my data is all set, and I am ready to make a graph. So what I'm going to do, if I, if you just take all this stuff, all this data, just select it all, and if you hit scatter plot, okay, it's going to try to make sense of it. Uh, Excel is going to try to make sense of it, and and to Excel, it appears that there are multiple series here. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I I let it make the scatter plot. And by the way, we're always going to be using scatter plots. But now I'm going to go into select data up here. It's chart tools, design and select data. And I'm going to get rid of all these extra series here. So we only have one series of data. Okay. And then, of course, I could have avoided this problem if I had set my data up better uh, in the spreadsheet. But I figured that some of you didn't do that, so I'd show you how to clean it up. I'm going to click Edit here. And now I'm going to, um, I don't need a series name since there's only one series. I'm going to find my X values. Now, where are my X values? See, it, Excel uh, thought that my X values were all this row, this entire row here. But, of course, my X values are my average milliliters. So I'm going to select just that column. And my Y values are my average mass. So I'm going to select just this column. All right. Now that looks pretty reasonable right there. Let's see. Click OK. All right. And I'm done with that for now. Now, the next big thing we've got to do is we've got to put in our error bars so that I can show my uncertainty on the graph. Expand this a little bit. And first thing I want to do for that is click Layout, and then you see Error Bars here. And click More Error Bars Options. Now it's going to start off giving me the Vertical Error Bar option, so I click Custom, Specify Value. Now on my, verti my Vertical Error Bars are... Oh, and darn it, this thing got in my way, so let me cancel out of here and get this out of the way. On my vertical axis I have mass, so that means I need my mass uncertainty in this. So when I click this, my uncertainty in mass is going to be what I want there. And then again I have to do the negative error value also. Same thing, same column, same data. All right, so there's my uncertainty in uh, the vertical error bars. Now, it's weird on this on this new version of Excel. The only way to get at the horizontal error bars is to actually click on them on the graph. And now when I click the error bars, it will give me the horizontal error bar options. Um, and I'm going to get this out of the way because I've got to get my, my uncertainty in volume this time. Now remember, this little icon here with the little red arrow, that is sending you to the spreadsheet so that you can select things on the spreadsheet. And that's what I'm doing there. Okay, now my errors are very small, and yours are probably going to be uh, quite a bit larger than this. I should have made them. In fact, I can't even see my error. I should have made my errors larger. Uh, one thing I can do is I can make my... can make these points smaller, the markers. Okay. See, now you can see my error bars. Of course, they're still, still very small. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and change my error um, so that you can see it. Uh, let's see. You know what I'll do is just throw in some... Uh, My uncertainty in volume is, f oh, you know what it is? It's because my, my uncertainty in volume is pretty significant. It's because I've got so much mass. You know what? If I pull one of these off of here, let's just pull one of these trials out. Uh, we'll pull two out because then you'll be able to see it better. I won't have such a broad range of data. My mass uncertainty is still very small, though. That's why... I mean, you can't really see my mass uncertainty, and that's not unusual. You may not be able to see yours either. Okay. Now, don't forget the the other thing you want on here is you're going to want your uh, you click on the graph here if you want to get back to those tools, the chart tools. I'm going to want to put in a trend line, linear trend line. Maybe my hypothesis was that it was linear. And then you look to see if any of your points are further than their uncertainty from the line. So that's what you're looking to do. Now, don't forget your titles and so forth. If I go to uh, 
up here under layout I can put in a chart title make sure you put in your axis titles and so forth I don't need this stuff over here this little box and get rid of that and make sure it's large enough then you can just copy this whole graph copy it right into a word document or whatever you want to do alright have fun with that if you have any questions just let me know